Never mind, no one ain't on me. But if money is your problem, then actually we got the answer key. I'm whole learning profit, it's simple, don't make it challenging. Shut out the size of value. You're coming out with the strategy. I ain't saying it's easy, but focus is something. One minute to live, live in one minute. Salary. Hey, you can be your own bank and take the time while you're learning it. Where you got to be is not where you reside currently. We gon' teach you how to compound it while you're earning it. It's that new type of money. That's a different type of currency. Hey, you can be your own bank and take the time while you're learning it. Where you got to be is not where you reside currently. We gon' teach you how to compound it while you're earning it. That new type of money. Hey, that new type of money. You understand, but if you don't, we got you. Live in 30 seconds. We gon' break that thing down to you simple and proper. And let you know you were created to donate and prosper. And we just tryna help somebody. We ain't tryna convince you. It's kinda hard to believe if you still ain't interested. Put your money in the bank. They won't collect no interest. So Ready to go live in ten. You wanna take action? We ain't capping it for real, y'all. In five, four, three, two, one. Tap in the be your own bank movement.com. Now you could be your y'all know I gotta ride out real quick. Where you about to be is not where you reside currently. Y'all heard it. Where you about to be is not where you reside currently. We got that 808 come in real quick. Where you about to be is not where you reside currently. I see you over there, Miss Hall. All right. Listen. T G I T. Yeah, then no, you know what? I don't like how that's spelled because that's spelled Tajit. Never mind. But, anyways, happy Tuesday, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Bridging the Gap Hidden in a Plain Sight from the Be Your Own Bank Movement. I'm everyone's favorite radio and TV personality, Lisa Monet, your favorite host, favorite radio empowerment influencer, AKA known as the Wealth Connector. Why? Because I get you to the ching ching, bada bing, da da ding, and all of that stuff. I should be a rapper, but I'm not. But anyways, family, welcome, welcome, welcome once again to um, this amazing episode of Hidden in Plain Sight. We are doing it. Listen, we're in the third quarter. We are in the third. No, we're in the fourth quarter. We are in the fourth quarter, family and friends. And guess what? 2023 is almost here. 2023 is almost here. So we have an amazing topic to talk about, but I want to say thank you, Rejoice904. Listen, wherever you're listening to us from, on Facebook, on um, I was going to say, I don't know, I was going to say MySpace. Good God, MySpace is like from like when I was in high school. But um, um, LinkedIn, Rejoice904, Facebook, and YouTube. Share, 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 family and friends. Share, share, share. This topic that we have today is amazing. The topic is, what does your legacy say about you? So before we um, go any further and drop some other um, special nuggets and other information, I'm going to let this amazing, fantabulous, wonderful Lifus, my co-host, go ahead and introduce herself all the way from the Netherlands. Miss Hall? Thank you so much, Miss Licia Monnier. So hello, everyone. Sherida Hall from the Netherlands. Yes, a very small country in uh, Europe, but we think very big. Uh, Beyond Bank, Netherlands expansion leader, uh, building a whole team in Netherlands, in Europe. And thank you for having me on. Absolutely. We're family. That's what we do here. So family, the Be Your Own Bank movement is the largest economic empowerment movement in the history of mankind. And we are focused on educating and impacting over 2 million families to live life on their own terms, to take back what belongs to them and change the narrative, whether it's something passed down from your family or whether you're starting something new. This is what we give you the vehicle. And we have the keys just for you to do that. So before we get ready to introduce an uh, amazing guest that, um, is going to grace us with his beautiful, magnificent presence. Um, I want to drop some knowledge real quick. Listen, we have kingdom currency going on. This movement is doing so many things. And what is kingdom currency? Let's talk about it. We are the, fo the first and only fully owned and operated, fully owned, operated, minority owned and operated organization that has our own socially conscious cryptocurrency token as well as our own educational platform. Well, what does that mean, Licia? I'm glad you asked. That means that we understand that, you know, that everyday people need to win. So if you're a person who breathes, 
and drinks water, we're talking to you. If you're a person who um, wakes up in the morning, we're talking to you. So let's talk about it. When we say socially conscious, we're talking about a token kingdom currency, a token with a purpose at kingdomcurrency.exchange. And guess what that purpose is? Helping ministries and nonprofits, helping our veterans. Thank you for your service. Helping historically black colleges and universities. And yes, some of those are closing right now. And as well, um, affordable housing and green energy. Listen, it's time for us to walk in wealth and help others. You can do well and do good at the same time. You can be a philanthropist and walk in profit at the same time. And we also have a summit coming this weekend in Florida, Southern Florida. And guess what? Yours truly here, Jacksonville, Florida, De um, December, October the 22nd, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're giving this information. We're helping people. We're showing you how you can take that by force, what belongs to you. No matter what your mom said, your dad said, no matter what your past is, no matter what your education is, understand that you can live life on your own terms as you should. So I'm just so excited about that. And as well, you know, look, I got the books up here. Y'all see, we are really... Listen, be your own bank, hidden in plain sight, success on God's terms. We really care about pouring into people and shifting the narrative. Like I said, this is very important to us. So if you have not gone to the summit, they already did it big in the Netherlands. They already did it big in the UK. They already did it big in Milwaukee and Cleveland, Ohio and in Detroit. And so we're going to hold it down in Florida as well. But guess what? If you have not made it to the summit, um, you can go to bybmovement.eventbrite.com and guess what? It's so affordable. How do I know? Well, it's free. If you can't afford free, you got a problem and you need to speak to me. I'm just saying. So now that we got that off of our shoulders and we gave you all of this goodness. So the amazing um, guest that I'm going to introduce, I really want y'all to really understand what type of person he is. He is someone who is making his mark and planting a flag in Jacksonville, Florida, as well as around the world. I see expansion all over his businesses. I see expansion all over his life and the impact that he has on friends and family. It's really something that made him stick out and why we reached out with the Be Your Own Bait movement, because we understand that empowered people do what? Empower people. And so he's a producer. He's an actor. He can sing. He can sing with the S-A-N-G. Yes, yes, he can. But, he, you know, he's really shifting the narrative and he's putting himself in a position to help people and bring them along with them. And so we just, oh, and he's a veteran. Thank you for your service. I can't not acknowledge that. Absolutely. So I know that he's making an impact and he's bringing his legacy with him. So this topic totally fit with what he's doing in his life and the people in his life that he knows and loves. So I do want to introduce, he got to take himself off a of mute though, but Michael Carter, the world, I'm going to, the man who's on all the billboards, y'all going to see him, the man who's going to be having blockbusters all over, the, the man who's going to be winning all the awards. And I'm like, I know him. Yes, him. So Welcome, welcome to Hidden Plain Sight. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes. Maybe yes. sound like I'm a star. What do you mean, sound yeah. like? Yes, sound <laughs> like that's who you are. Let's let's fix that. He he must not know, Miss Hoff. She must not know. <laughs> so absolutely. <All> right. <laughs> welcome, so, welcome. Right, welcome. So. Um, I do want you to introduce yourself a little bit before we go a little further, because I really think this is a lot of meat and potatoes that we have today, and we got to share this information, but we want to get to know you a little more. So if you could do a little brief overview of who you are and what you're doing to impact the world and, you know, things of that nature, I'd love to hear it. Awesome. So my name is Michael Carter, but I put Andre Pico Train on Facebook because I have an alias. And... uh from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, born and raised, moved to Jacksonville in 1991, joined the military in 1995, uh, retired in 2017, and I moved back to Jacksonville, Florida. I did that because my family was there, my uh, mother, my father, my brothers and sisters and nieces and nephews. So I moved back to kind of, you know, instill myself into their lives. And, uh, you know, uh, once I got there, I got into acting, uh, got into filmmaking, started my uh Carter Boys Entertainment, which is a talent agency where we work with uh, local artists to try to develop them and, you know, just give them the game of how the industry works. Uh, also, I managed two artists once I got there. Uh, shot a video for one of the artists recently, 
and now she she'll be on this television network uh, sooner or later. Well, around wow. November the twenty seventh. So I also have a nonprofit called Rebuilding Unity Through Healing Hearts, which is uh, my grandmother's first name Ruth and my mother's middle name Ruth. And uh, what we do is we teach, train, and mentor youth, uh, and and we kind of take them from that from this new type of technology stuff and instill the old in them because that's where we got our discipline. That's where we learned a lot about life because we didn't have computers and technology, which is, I'm not saying it's great, but a lot of times uh, when the kids focus more on technology, they really don't have a sense of what's going on in the world. Cause you can see some kids, like if they ride in the car, they face just like this. And you can <laughs> say, switch seats with me and you drive and tell me where we just came from. So they're not aware of their surroundings. So we take all that from them. I take them camping. I, I uh, teach them how to work on vehicles, you know, DIY type stuff, and just teach them a skill set because that's what they're going to learn the way the economy is going right now. They need to learn a skill set because it's getting crazy out here in this world. So I also do film. I uh, started doing film five years ago. I have a film that I call What Goes Around Comes Around, which I just did a distribution deal with Dame Dash Studios, and that'll be on Tubi pretty soon. Um, mm-hmm. I also have two shorts. One would be on YouTube, and the other would be on Amazon. And uh, I have a web series called The Lives We Live, which is uh, will be ongoing, and that should come out around November the 15th. And I uh, just did a short uh, scary movie. That'll be out in Halloween. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> I have a movie with Lil Boosie that Lil Boosie just did in Atlanta. I also have a movie uh, that uh, Roy Jones Jr., is uh one of the PAs in that and he's down that's down in uh where is it at uh Pensacola. So yeah, so I'm doing that and right now I'm in Texas. I just uh fought for custody for my son and I won. Come on. So I'm at his Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So how many hours do you have in one day, Mr. Carter? <laughs> I know, I'm telling you. Yes. Well, I like that you, you're you doing a lot in the community and you said a word that really stuck out and it's really true about skill sets. Um, some of the things that you're teaching mm-hmm. these young people to do are transferable. And that's something that we focus on highly in the Be Your Own Bank movement is transferable skill sets as well. So one thing right. is right. we have to prepare, we have to prepare like, because if the zombie apocalypse, I mean, if something happens, <laughs> if something happens, you have, be, you have to be prepared. If the power cuts off, you have to know how to have those survival skills, right? You have to know how to pay attention. Uh, and like you said, get your head always from being focused in um, technology. Um, there is a time and a place for that, of course. But in reference Most to a lot, of, yeah, a lot of things that you do, we do understand that. Um, what you're doing, there's a lot of people who want to do what you're doing, but they don't have the money or they don't have the time or they don't have the money or the time. And so, you know, this is what I love about the Be Your Own Bank movement, because we have the vehicle to help give the money and the time back to people. And I wanted you to, you know, um, and I wanted to, you know, whisper in your ear and ask, you know, in reference to the young people that you're helping, um, how are they preparing to, um, when you're saying things are going on in the world, and of course they are, but how are they having an the economic advantage right now in reference to skill sets? Because like I said, with this movement, what we do is we make sure that people can live life on their own terms, poor their kids. And remember, this is legacy building that we're speaking about. So, you know, um, I, um, in reference to money wise and resources, what are y'all pouring into the children to make sure that they're okay when stuff happens? Cause life is always going to happen. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, at the church, we do a workshop and we have financial advisors come out and kind of talk to them about finances, kind of talk to them about credit. And when I teach them about DIY type stuff, like working on vehicles, you can take your vehicle to a, to a, a mechanic. And a mechanic is going to charge you, say, about three to five hundred dollars to fix on your vehicle. So, say, let, let's say a starter, a starter. You take the belt off, take two bolts out, 
put the belt back on the same way you took it off, put the two bolts back in, tighten it down to the torque specification, and it's done. And one of the technologies, one of the best things they got is YouTube that'll give you everything you need on YouTube. But what they do is they'll go to the junkyard and they'll buy a starter from the junkyard. They'll clean it up and they pay $20 for the starter and went and put it in your vehicle and charge you $500. So they're going to charge you for the same labor you can do yourself, but you just got to, you know what I'm saying, be able to uh, just get out and, and figure it out and try to do things. Now, I know cars is something that, you know, you drive and it's dangerous if you really don't know what you're doing, but we have a, a, a licensed mechanic that'll come out and teach you those things. And, you know, you can get licensed as well. You can go to school for it. You don't have to go two years. You can go for eight months and get a certificate to teach you the basics of how to work on these vehicles. And a lot of these kids, like there's a lot of single parents, and those are the ones I focus on. Because if you have a mother that's driving and she gets a flat tire, you know what I'm saying? She's sitting there waiting on AAA when that, that grown boy that's sitting next to you, that's 14, 15, 16 years old, can jump in the back of the trunk, pull that spare tire out, jack that car up and change the tire within 10 to 20 minutes, whether your mama's sitting out there for a whole hour waiting on these folks to come. So it's just, you know, trying to... Huh? <laughs> my boy. Yeah, so, you know, uh, economically, it's, 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 it's saving that dollar that you can, you know, you're wasting money having these people trick you into working on your vehicle. And what they do once they work on it, they break one issue to fix another just for you to bring the car back. And now you don't even know what's wrong with your vehicle because you don't took it to somebody that don't really know nothing about your vehicle. I don't even listen to the radio when I drive because I want to hear my vehicle. You know what I'm yes. saying? So anything, no one works on my truck but me. So I save a whole lot of money right. putting parts on myself. I mm -hmm. like it. Yeah. Yes, I'm <laughs> listening. I'm listening to uh, because what he say is makes sense. Um, but what is important for him is that the people lear learn a skill so they can uh, always uh, prepare themselves for the future. And it start with the little children, and uh, that's what I understand, Mr. Carter. Is that right? Yes. Correct. It starts young. To... Yeah, you got to teach. Them. Yes. Yeah. And uh, but so, um, children have an own. Um, how do you say it? Uh, puberty. Puberty. Right. Yes. Puberty. So how do you uh, learn them to learn a skill? How do you uh, empower them and convince gotta... them? you got to make it fun for them and you have to have so we teach training and then mentor so the teach phase of it is where we teach them you know uh visual you know uh we put them put it on boards it's like a class a powerpoint or whatnot so we talk to them about this and that and stuff like that and then we train them on it that's hands-on they put their hands on whatever we trained them on and then mentorship so at the mentorship is them mentoring each other so it's train the trainer so they yes. would train one of the friends in the class that they learned everything from. So they're teaching each other and they're making it fun. So them yes. teaching, that gives them the knowledge of letting them know, okay, he said do this. Then I walk around and say, did you do that right? Uh, I think I forgot. And, it, and you make it fun. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Make it fun. Uh, so and that's important that's in thing. this time. That's Correct. important in this time because a lot of children, the pressure of the school, the pressure of the whole world is on their shoulders. And it was another time when we are young, when uh, it was five years ago, of course. <laughs> but when I was <laughs> when I was young, the pressure was not so heavy in this time. And uh, right. a lot of children learn how to play the PlayStation. They know they know uh, their the head uh, grows like this, the neck grows like this because they're <laughs> only yeah. they're only. Yeah. learn how to do this they don't and you're right if if we are lost on our way they cannot find a way back right right the, the, and then, the reading so the motivation yeah. is very important that you motivate them and i like it because a lot of uh a lot of people don't do that right right so and that right. is the legacy where we're talking about the legacy that you leave behind for your children and other people's children Correct, correct, so, correct. And why is that so important for you to 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 show them what they have to learn? Because I like the way I kind of the way I grew up. Uh, you know, we grew up like that. I, I'm from Mississippi originally, 
and everything we had to do with our hands. My uncle taught me, you know, basically be be self sufficient. Learn to do everything on your own. What this man can do, you can do it. You can do yourself. You just have to apply it. So if 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 he knows how to work on a car, learn to work on a car. Learn every skill set that you can learn. You ain't got but one life to live. So take advantage of it. If it's out there and the resources are available, take advantage of it. And like now today, they have more resources than we had back then. Uh, y'all remember when we used to drive and you had to print out the doggone uh, the map, oh, the map quest. Quest. Map yeah. quest. And, the, <laughs> and the person next to you had to say, all right, uh, hold on, hold on, slow down, 200 feet, you're going to make a right. You ain't have nobody in your ear. Like, uh, go right at this uh, intersection <laughs> or whatever. Right, now right. they just tap it in their phone, but if that goes out, they don't know where they're at. They lost. Yeah, so, you know, so let me see, start with your family, with your father, with your mother, and so you want correct. to pay it forward. Correct, let me ask real quick. So um, Ronald Lau says um, that he's glad what you're doing, Mr. Carter. In our time, we did, not, we did our own flat tires, our own motors, and those things were normal right. to us in those right. times. But now everyone's making it commercial. And he said, Correct. he's just happy to hear you doing these things. And so the question that was in the chat is, so what is a good legacy? It includes all kinds of accomplishments like overcoming adversity, raising right. content children, walking in integrity, kindness, achievements, and success through a lifetime. And um, someone else says, I'm older. I use maps <laughs> that we got from the gas station. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. 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 Map. That's it. The big old yeah, book, yeah. you know they're flipping, or the little fold out. <laughs> yes, God. Okay, so I have a question. Because you are a prior military um, mm -hmm. in the Beer on Bank movement, um, as I was going over, um, we have kingdom currency. And what kingdom currency does, I know I you know, just watched some of our videos, and I know I've exposed you to it, but um, it's one of the major things that, we do is we focus on the four pillars of the community. So just um, reiterating that's the HBCUs, that's the um, ministries and nonprofit, affordable housing and uh, um, green energy and veterans. And so I wanna talk about veterans right now. The reason mm -hmm. that, the reason that's a, that's a heavy pillar because we understand a lot of times when our veterans are trying to transition back into civilian life, back into, I'm not gonna say the real world, but now they're right. back into the, he, you know, they, they come back home and right. we notice, listen, we see, let's be real. And I know in Jacksonville, Florida, and everyone might not be a veteran that be homeless on the side of the road, but that's <laughs> a lot of, I, I know everyone ain't a veteran, right? But a lot right. of times from family and friends, some we have some mutual friends and they do say the same things. Maybe they love serving the country. Great. But when it comes to feeling the support after they transition, it feels like they, uh, from what I've heard and from what I've seen from family members and other people who have um, had that background, that they don't feel like they've had the support when they had that transition of life, right, back into civilian life. So my question to you is, because we have this kingdom currency to help our veterans, you know, how do you think that's going to impact? Because there's never been anything like this. Because there's some, it's intentional to make sure that you guys are taken care of in transition. Because they could be disabled. You could have had mental illness, physical illness. You know what I mean? So, you know, what does that mean to you that we set up a socially conscious token focusing on people who have served our country? Well, uh, one thing, uh, they have to know about it. Um, yes. Uh, I've talked to a lot of the uh, veterans that are homeless because uh, we feed them on Saturdays. And uh, I sit down and I talk to a lot of them. And a lot of them don't have the knowledge of what's out there for them. Some of them don't really want to know because they're content with being homeless. Um, but uh, just, just the knowledge, like I said, the resources that are available to them, they just have to be able to reach out and touch it, but be consistent with doing it. And a lot of them aren't. They, they are happy with being retired or being where they are. And they, yeah. we served our country and that's it. You know, yeah. we're going to collect the check and either, oh man. Fuck. We can hear you. <laughs> we lost you. Yes, I think maybe, maybe the radio of the telephone is uh, ringing. Oh, so, so 
from what I got from what he was saying was they don't know about this. And I think yes. that's very important, very important that we make it known. That's that that really just stuck out to me that he said yes. that, right? Because yes, my right, we're the first socially conscious cryptocurrency token, right? But in addition. If they don't know that it's there, this is a great spot for us to continue to share this and have more exposure on it, right? Yeah. So I like that he brought that out. Um, brought that out. So let me um, if you're going to say something, you're more than welcome to. But I'm gonna acknowledge the chat real quick. Mm -hmm. So Ronald Lau says society wants us to keep us dependent on, dependent to earn money from us. The more dependent you are the less you save that is so true the more yes. dependent you are the less you save so learning is a skill learning yeah. is skill byob you better talk you better represent but it's true um dependency because if we're not dependent on the government if we're not dependent on society i think a lot of th things will be chaotic and let's talk about removing that dependency right, right. Let's let's talk about that. Imagine, you know, what we do, we expose people to live a life of freedom. And yes. the reality is it makes people uncomfortable and they don't believe that they can be free because they've been, you know, chained up for so long. Yes. So um, mentally, mentally. Right, 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 right. Um, I've even had some of that um, I won't say exposure, but my mindset to a degree, and not so because I don't want to be free, but because I didn't know how to be free. Mm. Listen, this is this is something um, very uh, not funny. It is not funny, but uh, did you see the movie Harriet Trumpman with um, the um... the new one? I didn't see it. I need to see it. Tell okay, me so <laughs> what happened when she free her people? So uh, she was free. She go back and uh, she want to free her people, and she goes back. Uh, to her sister because she was uh, looking for her sister and the sister was working in a big house by the master and she had three children okay and and she was so the the, the sister was so afraid to to be free because she thought if i'm going to free what i am going to do what is next so what happened when she wants to free her sister and she and she prepared everything to set her free the the sister stays there because a lot of people are afraid of independence and uh, afraid of freedom because they don't know what is outside outside their comfort zone and um i also had it when i quit my job when i worked with the city hall with the government uh, when I sat at home, my mind and my whole life was prepared to be an excellent employee. But when I was home and I start trading and make money with trading, I feel I I feel that I was alone and I don't have anybody. I don't have to talk with anybody. So I understand why they are afraid. But right. the 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 scariest place is your comfort zone and they don't understand so we have to talk to people about what is out of their comfort zone because a lot of people don't understand they don't understand that they can do a lot and leave legacy behind for the family or for their uh, children or for themselves no that's good i like that you said that I, i'm definitely gonna have to watch it now and i just think a lot of people will be like that it was even less you could even go in the bible mm -hmm. um when moses pulled the, you know um called the people out of egypt or you know yes. god told him call the people out of egypt and he did and then they're free they're, free. they're free. complaining complaining they're complaining well we we have food with the with the masters we have food with the egyptians now we're hungry we at least had a hot meal right and yes. so they rather go back in bondage for a hot meal because it was a routine, because something was normal, because yes. they knew what to expect. They got the job done. Hey, I might get a few whippings, but I got a hot yes. meal yes. and I got a place to stay. <laughs> I got a few whippings. But... <laughs> yes, but this is so right. 
And uh, I'm sorry, I have to laugh about you. Excellent point, Shuri, that the danger of the comfort zone is. It's what, what, what does it say? Is it I low? It leads you to do nothing. Oh, leads. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So um, it is it, it, it is it is difficult for a lot of people because uh, it starts when we are young. With four years, you go to school. What's the age in the USA that they go to school? So we have um, we have what I don't know if you guys have it, but we have what's called VPK, and that's basically it's a pre kindergarten, so it's for yes. four year olds. Okay, four year olds. So basically, it can start from between four or five and six, depending on the parent. But yes, yeah, so it could be from four to six, but that's when it starts. Yes. Okay, when they are five, correct me if I'm wrong, I think when they are four years, they have to go to school. That is, that is, uh, you have to send them to school. And the, pre, the preschool, you can bring them when they are, uh, I think, three years old. Oh, uh, wow. So it starts there. That we start there to be a very good uh, listener and to obey, obey uh, the Bye. teacher. Yes, we have to listen to the teacher. If we want to go to the bedroom, we have to uh, ask. If we want to play, ask, everything. And then we go to school and we have the same thing, but then we have to continue roster of uh, uh, agenda. Then you don't go to uh, at home. Do the children go to home uh, when they're young on school? No. Ask the question again. So the children go to school and then have one hour a break and then they go to home. You have to pick up your children, uh, bring them home. And then an hour later, you have to uh, put them back on school. You don't have that in the, no? Okay. Yes, they put us on work. <laughs> wow. So, so when you are from four years old, you are programmed to be a good employee. And then you have to work till 60, maybe 70 years, a uh, lot of, People have to work maybe two seven years, so I understand that they cannot be free because their um the brain is washed, and right. they don't. And what he, what was uh, Mr. Carter say was that uh, they don't think for themselves anymore because they are so focused and so uh, to be a good employee. And we also see it in the, in the business. The mind the the success is in the mindset. And the mindset, it is a repeat. You have to repeat, 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 repeat. Just what the school is doing and your work is doing. Otherwise, you cannot be free. And what is freedom? Freedom was that I can make my own choices. That freedom I can work. Movement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That is, what, that is freedom for me. And a lot of people... Uh, just like in the military, they have to say, okay, you have to stand up, you have to do the push-up, you have to do this. They don't think for themselves. Yeah. And, and when they think for themselves, they don't know what to think because they don't know what they don't know. And that's why they stay in the place when they are out of the army, they think, okay, that's life. This is life. I did what I have to do and I'm I'm homeless and it's okay. And that's why I like what Mr. Carter say when he's talking with those people. Right, right, right. So I want to piggyback off of something you said. This is why y'all need to become part of the Be Your Own Bait Movement because we help with that mindset. Be Your Own Bait Movement.com. Oh, don't forget, family and friends, we got our own app. Yes, an app. You down with APP? That's B Y O B. Yes. So go on your Google Play Store, your Apple Store, and download the Be Your Own Bank app, BYOB Movement, BYOB Worldwide. It'll populate because it's only one of us, and it's a lot of us. There's only one movement. But I want to, um, I was thinking about something you said. So back when I worked in retirement investments, I was, there was a, there was a point I was a customer service representative, and I work with a lot, I spoke with a lot of retirees, highly compensated retirees, the people who worked it. American Airlines, like the pilots, the people who work, you know, highly compensated at Rolls Royce, Boeing, military, wow. um, defense of, um, um, positions and things like that. And uh, it, something that you said made me think about how that training stemmed from our childhood. So after a call, you know, most time you call call centers, 
there's usually a what at the end? A survey, right? Most people go, well, there's a survey at the end. It's one minute, two minutes, 30 seconds, or automatically goes to it. Well, when I used to get off the calls, um, now mind you, these people are my seniors, right? These are 50, 60, 70 years old, 80, 90, sometimes 100 years old. And they'd be like, do I have to stay on for the survey? Do I have to? And yeah. I say, no. <laughs> but yes. the reality is they're asking permission. They're yes. asking, is it okay for them to decline? Is it okay for them yeah. to say no? No matter how grown they are, they and I know ask that permission. Is, right. They're asking permission for something that is completely optional. So the way you pointed it out, that's that's very true. We're so can do I have to um do I have to listen to the survey? You know you don't have to listen, yes. but you're waiting for me to validate it's okay for you not to. Yes. Definitely. I like that you pointed that out. And that's that's why we have an acad academy and that's why we coach them and mentor them so right. they can learn to how to think for themselves. And <laughs> yes, because we we have to uh, free them free their mind and the rest will follow. Sing it for me. You better yes. throw it back That's in vogue. <laughs> yeah. So even if you're white, if you're black, if you're yellow, if you're old, if you're young, everyone can do it and everyone can make a legacy and leave a legacy behind. And not the legacy, oh, she worked till she was dead. Oh, she worked till she was uh, sick and tired. And oh, she was, we can make a great legacy. What do you want on your uh, grave? Oh boy, I forgot the word, grave, stone, grave, graveyard. Your tombstone, your gravestone, whatever. Yeah. Yes. What do you want to say? People in the chat can answer that question. Yeah, what what say on the on your on your tombstone on your um whatever it's called wherever y'all are at what do you want it in green mine's yeah. gonna say she was that shit i'm just playing it's not gonna say that <laughs> but um no that's important um that you really have to really think about these things in the long term um i i, I shared this on clubhouse um yesterday so i'll reshare it Yes, with my family and friends that I have went to this service to this church. I'm really enjoying the church. I'm enjoying the message, the energy, what they're doing resource wise, helping people. And so the service this month, the service for the month of October is about legacy. That's what the topics are. Legacy, legacy, legacy. Legacy. Yes. So he said something, the pastor, he's a visiting pastor. And he said that legacy is he said it never stops and I was like you know what wait a minute he's right he said a legacy you either he said yeah talk to me yes you're back he said legacy you either um you either leave it or you receive it you yes. either receive it and I whoa well, I didn't think about that. You either leave it or receive it. Legacy, you leave it or receive it. And I'm like, absolutely. He's absolutely right. Because yes. when I came to, when I was born, when I was a little baby, right? Oh, when boy. I was little, I, <laughs> 36 years ago, when I was a little baby, I was born into the legacy of my family. Yes. Now, the legacy of my family, there's some great things and there's some things that are not so great. But the beautiful thing is, and that I'm doing now, even taking coaching and development and um, a mentorship, and it makes me cry sometimes. Can I be real? Coaching yes. does always feel good. These little thug tears, they drop sometimes. Yes. Drippity all, drop, they happen All the sometimes. mascara, all the mascara, yes, yeah. yes. It drops, but I'd rather... I'd rather cry and get whatever un, you know, unbeneficial thoughts, unbeneficial behaviors, mindsets, and attitude out of me than keep it and then walk yes. around smiling and be in a delusion, right? Yes. And so, um, you know, but I really thought about it. So you, whatever your mother and father and your grandmother and grandfather, so what? And it's a legacy that's passed on to you. The beautiful thing is, what is our legacy saying about us? And we can enhance it. We don't have mm -hmm. to. If, you can, and it's even if your legacy is amazing, it can get more gooder. <laughs> it 
skin can yes. really be more gooder, you know? So, you know, um, when I'm just asking you, Ms. Hoff, when you think about, you know, the things your parents did and grandparents did, you know, how do you feel about like your legacy? And if it's an amazing legacy, you know, you know, how do you feel you can enhance it? Yes, yeah, so Ms. Carter is back. Welcome back, Mr. Carter. Welcome back, Mr. Carter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, maybe we can ask uh, Mr. Carter this question. Okay, so uh, I'll put it up. Okay, Mr. Next Carter. Next is back. Yes. Bye. Yeah, mute your phone real quick. Me? Oh, it's not on. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You hear me? Yes. Okay. So the question was, well, the statement is, your legacy, you either leave it or you either leave it. I forgot the topic. What? The legacy, you either leave it or you keep it. There you go. And so we're asking the legacy point from you. From your legacy point from you. From your legacy look like. What does my legacy look like? What did you receive? Uh, and what what is what was left to you? Uh well, what was left me was the value that my mother instilled in me. Uh, you know, uh family, love, uh God, of course. Um, so I want to leave that to my kids, you know, just uh family wise, because right like I told them the other day. Uh, my nieces and nephews, like their togetherness, like how we were when we was growing up, we was always together. Me, my brothers, my cousins and things like that. Like we grew up as a tight knit family and the way they're growing up now, they're so far apart. They can't even have a great conversation with each other and be able to, you know, uh, function right. They don't hang out. They don't go out with each other. They sit around and all they want to do, you know, they smoke, they go to sleep. It's like they're wasting their lives and I'm trying to get them to, to do more to be able to, you know, teach their kids, you know, about family and stuff like that. Like, that's why, like, all my kids now have my, my one son that I just got custody of. Now all my kids are in Jacksonville, Florida with me. I have four boys, 28. My 28-year-old, he's a construction worker, about to go to truck driving school. My 25-year-old, he just, uh, he's a merchant seaman. So tomorrow morning he leaves to go to Alaska. Then I have a four-year-old. Then I have my 14-year-old. So, and, you know, now with him, because I told my other two kids, y'all basically the guinea pigs for me learning how to be a father. So my mother, <laughs> so, so now that I've learned, you know, I want to instill everything that I learned from my mother, you know, into them and leave that legacy as family is everything. Family is everything to me. You know, I love my kids. I love my family. I love my brothers. I love my sisters. If not, I would have never moved back to Jacksonville. So family is everything to me. So I want them to be the same way. So like a lot of my kids, uh, a lot of my nephews in my movies, and I want them to feel like there's more to it than just what they see out here in this environment. Like you can do anything you put your mind to it, but if somebody give you an opportunity or a chance, take that chance because yes. you have to build that legacy. And them kids, when your kids see it and, you know, they emulate you, that makes it even more better. So I just take what my mother taught me and I continue to, spread it to my kids and my family and my friends around me. I like your mother. Oh yeah, she was a great person. Yes. Yeah. Because she, they, she teach you well and uh, what you say is the children can't even have a conversation mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't have a conversation. When I call people they they are scary and they say oh my god, are, are you okay? Is it okay? Because they're not used to it. They can call. <laughs> Right. Everything is yeah. happy. Yeah. Stop. Wait, 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 wait. So the sound is off. You're mute. Yes. Got there me. We go. go ahead, Mike. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah. So, so like even on dates, like you said, like even out on dates when they're on dates, they're on their phones texting each other. They ain't even holding a conversation. Like what is that? You know? Oh boy, I, I missed that part. Can you say? <laughs> he, said, he 
said when they're on dates, they're not even holding conversations. They're on their phone. I can attest yes. to that. In the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. So you are producing, making films and series. So is there an, a message in those uh, movies and series? Because that is... Uh, yeah so so the first one the first one is kind of like it's not really a hood movie but it's somewhat like that but i didn't want to do the same narrative of uh you know dope boy stuff like because you know uh, one white lady told me uh she said uh when i sent her my movie she said uh because she seen the trailer and the cover she said uh same stereotypical movie you know being most black folks you know we make movies about the hood and stuff stuff yeah. stuff that we relate to so I made it about instead of instead of the guys being dope boys, they're uh, they're uh, investors. You know, Ooh, nice. they, uh, they they buy property, they invest in the community and things like that. So instead of I didn't want to, well, I didn't want that narrative of them being drug drug dealers or nothing like that. Yes. I wanted to change it a little bit. The uh, the lives we live, um, well, yeah, the lives we live. That's based on um, everyday life, and and yes. I play a good husband. You know what I'm saying? Like wow. the Cosby show. I don't want to play that husband that cheats because that's what you see in the black community is always cheating or now they're putting the homosexual stuff on there. So you can see this and a lot of blacks see all this homosexual stuff on there. So then they think it's the norm, you know, which nothing against homosexuality, but a lot of them feel that that's the norm. So they're throwing it on there because that's what they want us to see. So the lives we live is based on everything. Now, I is some cheating on that, but it ain't me. I want to play that role of the good husband. And my wife is a good wife, and we have a good family, and we're doing positive things, and we're trying to empower our friends to, hey, stop all that cheating and doing all that other stuff. So just a hardworking family man to take care of his family, love on his wife, and does things like that. So I try to put a message in, in all the films that I do. I like that. I like that. Yes, that they can think for themselves. And put the yes. put the people um, thinking because yes, uh, when I watch the 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 uh, the, the black uh, um, comedians and actors mm -hmm. here in the Netherlands, it's always funny. They are always <laughs> funny. If, right. And people, when people see us, they start laughing, and I thought, why are you laughing? Because they think I'm also funny. No, <laughs> the stereotype, the stereotype. Yeah, yeah. But maybe we can change that because we have a lot of successful people. And even if you're black, homosexual, a woman uh, or whatever, we can put the message out in the world that we are also, we are just people. We have a heart. We have all the right, right. get up, cut us open. We are red because we are bleeding, bleeding the same color uh, red. Mm -hmm. But people have to understand that there are no um, boxes. So you're black, you come from the hood. You're a black, you come from the Netherlands or from Africa or whatever. And mm -hmm. I think that if the people will accept themselves like a human being and not mm -hmm. I'm homosexual, I'm man, I'm gender, uh, uh, or I am woman because we cannot say that anymore. That's a really, <laughs> that's really a problem. <laughs> so okay, we are human beings. So and all human beings have a goal. We all want something. When some people want exception, you want to be accepted. Okay, try to accept yourself and don't mm -hmm. put it into the world. From yes, you have to accept me. Try to accept yourself. And what so you, you have the power. Um, you have the power to put it in your music and to put it in your television program, and we have the power to do it on the radio, social media. But I think your the, the type of people that you will reach is so much bigger, and I like that. You have you have uh, you. potential. You have greatness in you. Thank you. You better Thank be you. a judge. You better be a judge. I like it. I like it. Give me a ten. Give me a ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I do know, regardless of the race, the age, whatever, everyone wants to be free. Everyone does not want to be in financial bondage. Right. No wants to. Regardless if you are homeless, no, most people don't wake up and say, I feel like being homeless today. I feel like not paying my bills. I feel like being able to provide for my family. We don't do that. 
Yes. Right. And so, as we were saying, and what you're doing, you're empowering people too, um, Mike. In reference to, there are various ways, and I think having messages in your movies about investment, about people being that good image, it does shift the narrative. I do know within, I mean, I know in other countries, they're not, you know, it's not considered the black community, but here in the United States, we're labeled by color. Right? Correct, yes, correct. But um, in reference to the community, this community, the one that you really um, are serving, you're serving all communities, of course, but the one that you really make an impact in, I do know that there is a hurt financially. I know yeah. that there is financially and that affects economically and where there are a lot of people who are fighting to survive um they need help and they need ways they need vehicles so like what you're doing with your nonprofit, with your businesses in addition to getting on getting on this podcast and helping us expose to be your own bank movement like you said people need to know about this we need to have a podcast from your movie too. Anyway, <laughs> I played a rich woman. I played a rich woman. Okay. You play, you play, you're not even playing a part. That's what you are. You're cheating. <laughs> you're cheating. You don't even have to be on character. <laughs> no, but um, I think that the characters playing those roles do make a difference. I want to, just thinking about how important um, if you can hit that mute real quick one and both y'all um just think about how important um, television and media is i want to think of and i do want y'all to acknowledge i remember shows like the cosby shows like you said and um um a different world and stuff i saw so many positive shows where people who looked like me were doing something productive and were making a difference and so that is not the that's not the norm anymore. The norm is some of the things that Mike said. And so he's shifting that narrative. Our norm at the Be Your Own Bank movement is to shift people out of a poverty mindset and put them in a position where they can do what Mike is doing. A lot of people want to be you, Mike. They want to be you, but they don't have the money or they don't have the time. So how do we fix that? Well, you connect them to this wealthy woman over here, but or me, but reality of people who really care about you winning, but have results. A lot of people want things and they go with people who don't have solutions. We have the solution, right? And it is learning how to make money work for you. Skill sets, just like what you said. Skill sets are so important. I'm sorry to say most people who go to college and get a degree, most of them do not utilize their degree. They don't. They may want to, or they decided that's not what they want to do and that's okay so what's next well i know people who do trades make more than some people who do who have a a, a college degree who have a doctorate right so what we can also do is teach them what we do in this movement is how to become a walking atm you know where people don't who thought about living that dope boy life can learn this skill set and make money work for them and learn how to invest and, and your movies preaching that message would cause a shift in that narrative too. So I think like this is a great thing for all of us to come together and really put this out there because some people don't know what they don't know. I'm done. Mic drop. So what you say, I want to say something, but I forgot what I want to say. Michael, you can, uh, Mrs. Carter, you can. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I, I, to me, I, I like I say a lot of times, like everyone has a purpose in life, you know, Sam, but you a lot of times you have to find out what that purpose is, you right. know, so you can you can go from job to job, from skill set to skill set, whatever it is that you think that you're good at, you know, what is your purpose? Ask yourself that question every morning. Why am I here? What am I doing while I'm here? I did 22 years in the military uh, wow. and you know, being in these third world countries and seeing the poverty and what these kids go through. Like if a lot of these kids would see how these kids live and how they struggle and how they survive in Bosnia, Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait, you know, places like that. And they see how they survive 
a lot of the kids don't even expect to live at to live over five years old. A lot of those kids don't have medical, so they're gonna die before they hit eight. Don't have mm -hmm. any teeth in their mouth and they're struggling. So you know, once they see that you do have purpose, because these kids, they're happy, but they're struggling, but they're still happy. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, Americans, we're spoiled. You know, we're spoiled because we got all this, all this luxurious, even if it's for rich people or poor people, something is luxury in their life. But you got to figure out what your purpose is in life. And I figured out, you know, my purpose, I can't stop what I'm doing because it's hard for me to stop. If I sit down, I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah. So I have to keep doing it. I keep going for my family because I want generational wealth. You know what I'm saying? I want my family to have uh, money to fall back on. If my kids need it, they can get it. You know, uh, if, if, if they need to fly somewhere, all they got to do is go on one of their accounts, grab the money and go. If they yeah. need to do this, they can just grab it and go. They can do anything they want to do. You know, so that's what I want to happen. So you got to find your purpose. And my purpose is just I love helping people. I yeah. love doing people. I love to see the smiles on people's face. I love when they say, thank you for what you did, because I appreciate that. And that makes me feel good. You ain't got to give me money or nothing. And, and, and black people, we want the money now. We don't want to wait on it. You know what I'm saying? Like the investment thing and all that stuff, uh, stocks and bonds and all that, that's slow money. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and they want the fast money, but you got to wait. Everybody else wait for money. They they invest their money in this and buy this and buy that and learn the stock market and they make all this money and do what you guys are doing with the you know uh, with the BYOB and you know just taking that time to learn it and to sit still and learn it and then start making money and seeing how it grows. You know that uh that'll do a whole lot. Then you figure out your purpose and you're good to go. Yes, and what you say? Uh, people don't have money and people don't have time. About the time, I'm not agree with that because we all have the same time. Or do you have more time, Miss Carter? No, you also have 500 hours in a day. Yes, but I, the time management is very important because you have four children. Four children. Mm -hmm. four. I do. And so, and you are taking care of the children and you do the producing and singing and everything. So, I think time is nothing else than a priority. Mm -hmm. So what uh, what uh, what uh, what uh, do you uh, spend your time on? So in the money, if you can make time, you can make money. Correct. So, yes, Correct. I don't agree that people don't have time. I don't fall for that anymore because if you watch how many times people sit on the social media on Facebook, mm -hmm. really to 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 look at other men's problem to laugh at all men's problem. So then they can say, for, oh, thank God, they also have problems. No, yeah. that, is, that is not the life that I want to live. Mm -hmm. talk. No, you're talking, that, that's true. <laughs> yes. Darn, talk. I got caught on TikTok for a minute because they, they, they give you little mini dopamine hits, right? 30 seconds, one minute, uh -huh. next, and you're looking at the next, but most yes. of that is not any value, it's not fruitful. No. It's not. And so we know because of the mentorship, because of the coaching we have in addition to, yes, we teach you how to make money work for you. And people of all ages, all ethnicities from all over the country are doing the same thing that we're doing, becoming a walking ATM, but we're getting our time back, our freedom back, our time with family, so on and so forth. And so this is where that shift really has to happen. Of Like what um, Mr. Carter said is, you know, Taking the time to learn something that's going to benefit, being a forward thinker, learning how to make it work for you, learning how if you want, go, you can go for what you want to do, but just understand you have to put yourself in a position to live the life you want to live, and it takes time. But it's yeah. value. You don't get time back. You get one. You get one. There ain't no do over. No. You get one, right? So yeah. I, I just think this is so important. So. Listen, we're about to go ahead and close, but I'm excited. I love this conversation. Well, mad because you disappeared for a second. I know. I'm sorry. My phone. <laughs> I think I got a lot. I'm still sitting in this parking lot at the school. It's all good. And, and we appreciate what you're doing. Yes. For the appreciate your time. Right. It's yes. Amazing. <laughs> I'm trying to Thanks. get the extra hours that you put in a day. I'm trying to figure out how you can put all of that. Well, we're going to have to talk about that later so I can handle some of that. But 
Okay. You have labor, to learn how to take a power nap. <laughs> your labor is definitely not in vain. And I, I'm just excited about where you're going and what you're doing, who you're impacting. And, um, you know, let people know how to get in contact with you before we close. And then we'll go ahead and um, I'll go ahead and talk to you. Okay, on Facebook, I'm Andre Pico Train, P E E K O Train, like uh, Dukes of Hazard. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> on Instagram, I'm Slim Goody 2410. Uh, Cash App, I'm Slim Goody 904. <laughs> hey, and uh, YouTube, uh, enjoy your life to the fullest is one whole word. Enjoy your life to the fullest. And that's where you can find all my trailers to my films and things like that. I love it. Well, family and friends, it's Tuesday. We have an amazing call today. It is called it's time to get some training and let's go ahead and understand how to make money work for you. Partner together so we can live life on our terms as we do. So once Amen. again, you want to get that kingdom currency? Kingdom currency dot exchange, kingdom currency dot exchange. As well, download the BYB Moving app. You will be moving on the Apple or Android store. Go ahead and do it. It's time. And then don't forget that summit to, um, on this week and this Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have seven summits Jacksonville, Florida, and South Florida. We're filling the rest up. These are the last two for October. And understand it will continue to increase because this is the year of acceleration and elevation. And we're excited about it. So we love you guys. Get on the call tonight. You plug in 100% of the time, you get 100% of the information. Anything less, you already know what the percentage. So we love you. We will talk. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to wait. Is it stop? It's still recording? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, we did good. Can you hear me? It's okay, I stopped recording. You did? Yes. Oh. I put stop. So the live stopped. But the recording is going on. <laughs>